Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. We're back with the series Road to FM. As I have previously explained, in this series I will try to reach 2300 ELO rating. And uh, in the process I will play classical over the board games. And I will post them on YouTube, analyze them and explain how I prepared and uh, what was my thought process. In this game, uh, I mean this game was played uh, in Juniors uh, League in Croatia. I was playing the first board and uh, I had the white pieces. Now uh, I tried to look up my opponent's games and they weren't uh, many since my opponent is a relatively newer player. And that can be seen because in like last month or a month before that he gained over like 150 points. So this is not his real rating. He's uh, a, lot uh, a lot stronger than 1600, probably in the 1800s or at least 1700, 1700s range. But yeah, um, since I couldn't find any uh, of his games online, uh, I got there and sit at the chessboard and, you know, I had no preparation. So I just go, e4. And now I see my opponent plays the Sicilian. So I play knight to c3 and he goes d6. Now in this line where he plays d6 immediately, I have f4 on the third move and this line is considered decent for white now he plays knight to c6 I play knight to f3 and he goes g6 here I go bishop to c4 now this is the first moment uh, in the game where I started to spend a bit of time since I couldn't really uh, prepare I have thought about the line uh, that goes bishop to b5 or should I go to c4, you know. In the, in the line where I go to c4, sometimes uh, this bishop will end up uh, on a2 square, stuck, uh, aiming at nothing, basically, and it will be bad. And the in the other lines, uh, it will be a great attacker. So, you know, this is basically a double-edged sword. If your opponent is very good, and punishes you immediately by by playing well in the center your your bishop will get locked out so you know a safer option but uh, also a more dry one is to go to bishop b5 and then basically after they play a6 trade it off either for the knight or later for this bishop and uh, in the game i decide to go uh, to c4 and i think maybe the bishop will end up uh, being an important attacking piece now he goes e6 and actually uh, here I think I had uh, a similar game maybe the, the knights weren't uh, developed yet but in this position if they play like this fast uh, I can go d4 which is very good I smash in the center and uh, then I end up in a better position but I have forgot about that since I haven't looked at uh, looked at this line uh, for quite a while, so I just castle. And now, as you, as you can see, uh, this is now considered a mistake because I didn't play d4. Now my opponent plays uh, bishop to g7, continues developing d3, knight to e7, uh, queen to e1, and you know we have transposed into the grand prix attack. Now they castle and uh, here I go a4. Now I want to say something about this position. If they develop the knight on f6, the attack is basically in like more than half games pretty strong with queen to h4, with queen to g3 and f5. But when they play this setup, they control the square f5 pretty well. So it's very hard to attack them. Uh, so I immediately now play a4 and I make room for my bishop because I don't want them to play knight to a5 and uh, trap my bishop. I mean it is not trapped 
in a sense that I will lose them, but lose it, but uh, they will trade uh, the knight for the bishop. And uh, I wanted to keep this bishop alive, so I play four. And after they play six, now I move my king. Because in some lines, uh, when you start attacking, uh, they can check you and pose problems along this diagonal. So I move my king to prepare the attack. And now they play d5. So they strike in the center. And I go back to a2. Now, uh, had I taken like this, the, when they recapture here, now this f4 pawn is actually a not a good attacking pawn. It is actually a bad pawn. So, you never really want to take uh, like this. Now I dropped back. Apparently, uh, to here was a bit better, but after knight to a5, I would still have to go here. So, I don't know why I would waste the tempo. Maybe to induce a knight here, but I don't really care. And now he plays rook to b8. This is actually uh, a mistake. And I have realized that in the game, because later on in some positions, this rook may not be defended, because uh, this bishop hasn't uh, come out, came... This bishop is not out yet, so the queen is not defending. Uh, only this knight, and the knight can move in some lines. And now I felt like I should go into the attack. Now f5 here was the best move to immediately start gambiting the pawn but uh, this line is really hard to see and calculate i think uh, the idea is to now yes take here i basically did the same in the game oh and yeah and now st start rotating but that is really hard to see so instead i brought my king queen out to g3 and I start preparing the attack. And this is good uh, because now he kind of blunders with this queen to d6. He tries to uh, immediately prevent f5 by threatening to exchange the queens. But that is not really a good move. Because uh, the queen is misplaced here and later on I will use this bishop to uh, attack the queen and the rook at the same time. Now I go bishop to d2. And after b5, I take take, and now I go rook a to e1. And my point was, had he gone b4, I would go knight back here. Then I would go bishop to b1 and some c3. Or c3 immediately, and then later on some bishop b1, and I start to slowly build my attack. Right, and... Uh, my opponent didn't play that, instead he went bishop to d7. And now I play queen to h4 and I prepare f5 next move. So when he goes c4, I go f5. Now I open up this bishop. And some variation that could happen is to take, which he did in the game. And now I go bishop to h6 and I try to... Uh, if he takes, basically, I will start to get this attack. I try to go uh, knight to g5 and checkmate him. So, that wouldn't be really good for my opponent to do. And instead, he plays f6. What he should have done is attack my queen and after queen to h5, uh, then start uh, his attack to start his attack here. Now, after knight to g4, he can take the piece, but I take like this. King to g7 queen takes and apparently he would be safe in this position and now he can take the knight even though this looks completely lost they can still win because basically now they like trap my queen or something so some of these lines could happen but my opponent here immediately plays f6 to stop knight to g5 because it looks pretty scary now i take in the center and they recapture and here I go back with bishop to f4. And the point of this move, uh, actually I should uh, say that in this position I also looked at some rook sacrifices because, you know, they are interesting. Also I looked at some knight to b5 lines and something like this, you know, and then check they lose the rook. 
also uh, something like um, what they, something like this and now if they take here I have knight to here maybe or take uh, I can take this knight and uh, a lot of interesting lines uh, basically come out and if they take with the queen they lose the queen and stuff like that and I have spent about 30 minutes here so I was down to probably my last 20 minutes here and I play bishop to f4 and now uh, I skewer the queen and the rook so the only move is knight to d5 and here I have calculated the line d4 attacking the knight they, they go knight to g6 and I go queen to g3 and now if they take I will take with the queen and uh, their knight is pinned so I'm threatening to take the knight and after they go knight to f7 defending I take and they take and I would take on in d5 and as you can see I have uh, regained my pawn back and he has these doubled pawns and this bishop will not be so big anymore after c3 and uh, bishop to b1 so I have thought that that uh, was the most likely scenario to happen but here I missed a brilliant move from my opponent my opponent here plays rook to e8 now this is basically a positional brilliant and his point is if I now take the knight he will take f takes e5 and uh, as you can see he has four pawns and five that will start to march down the board and they are very well protected by all of these pieces actually you see everybody is involved and basically this is for humans uh, really hard to hold and even in doing this position I am up a piece I am worser and Stockfish says that this is the only line that doesn't lose immediately I mean with the, which doesn't lo uh, give uh, black a big advantage to sacrifice a piece uh, again to sacrifice back the piece immediately but uh, after that I didn't even want to take the knight I just go knight to d1 and I uh, try to consolidate with c3 and bishop to b1 now my opponent uh, took the bishop and I take and he went knight to f7 and now after I ex exchange the queens as you can see we are now in this endgame where uh, my knight in the other line would be here and now it is passive on d1 so immediately I here thought that my winning chances were pretty slim but I was playing for my club and as a captain I cannot fail and currently uh, the situation was uh, we had um, we, we, we lost one game and then we draw drew one game so we we were losing one and a half to half and there were still two games playing my game and the game uh, from one guy from my club and uh, actually guy from my club was winning so I knew uh, they uh, that he would win so in the end um, my game will be decisive basically it will be one and a half to one and a half and whoever wins uh, their club will win and now my opponent here offered me a draw and uh, I play knight to d3 and I refuse the draw I try to play for a win since even though I'm down, uh, down a pawn these pawns are doubled and I figure out I can try to play for a win now he immediately blunders with bishop to c6 this is not an optimal square to defend uh, the pawns because bishop is passive and now I go knight to h4 and I think maybe there are some winning chances and here I calculated after f4 uh, I take here bishop to here, to here rook to f3 that I am pretty much if not losing immediately because I have to defend like this he doubles and it's so hard to hold this position uh, and my opponent missed that and played the rook to e4 but the problem with this move is if I go into some endgame like this now he um, plays here and uh, he basically wants to trade off the rooks 
which I have to accept, either otherwise he gets uh, in on the second rank. And after I do accept, uh, I thought, at the time of playing this game, that he would take like this, and uh, you know, now he has a bishop pair. Okay, let's, then let's take with a rook. He basically uh, now has a bishop pair, there, the bishop pair is not too good. But I have this bishop that is pretty passive and I need some moves to get uh, him into the game. And uh, while I do, he already attacks this pawn, my bishop is passive, his rook is active and he has a bishop pair. Something like bishop to f8 and uh, bishop pair is preserved and he will play bishop to here, kick away my knight. And I really didn't enjoy uh, this position. so. After this move, he again offered me a draw, and I figure uh, I figured uh, if I draw, uh, my team will draw uh, as a whole. It will be two to two, and uh, that was exactly what happened. Even though I was much higher rated in this position, I needed to be realistic and think about my team, and I knew I will lose uh, quite a few rating points even with a draw. I had to be realistic and uh, t basically I, I knew that winning chess chances here are so small so I here accepted the draw. And that was a smart decision because in the end we drew them and um, then the second game I played I, I already posted it and I had a pretty nice win to recover. But that's it from this video, uh, from this game I lost 10 ELO points. So, you know, that happens sometimes. My opponent played a pretty good game, I sacrificed the pawn, I tried to attack him, but he found that, you know, brilliant move to defend and uh, in the end you have to be realistic and accept the draw. But that's it for this video, uh, see you in the part 4 of Road to FM, goodbye.